Hey, buddies, it's the Ron and Fez show. Uh, Fezzy's, uh, well, we played that song uh, today for Fezzy's dad who passed away last night. Uh, I was over at the uh, hospital last night with Fez and his and his people, his mom and his brother. And uh, Fezzy's doing very, very good. He's hanging in there. And uh, they're going to take his dad back to uh, Florida now. It's a very strange situation. His, his father came up, uh, father and mother came up to visit Fez last week and uh, having a great vacation for themselves, seeing the city and um, get sick and has been dealing with it for the last week and uh, last night uh, passed on. But Fez is doing um, amazingly well, uh, a lot better than... Uh, than when anyone would have bet on. That's the always the strangest things about people when they think uh, they can't do something. When the time comes, they end up being able to, to handle it as uh, perfectly. So um, it's one of those things that uh, you know, no one. I guess we all know that these things happen, but every time it comes up, it's it's a shock. No matter how long you live, every single time it comes up it's a uh, it's a shock uh hicks i know you just lost your mom when uh, a year and change ago year like, and change ago yeah a year a couple months ago. same kind of situation boom yeah out of nowhere literally out of nowhere and yeah. then uh, i take her to the hospital and one thing one thing leads to another and then i'm hearing you know all sorts of shit that i had no idea about it's exactly it's like... the same as here yeah <laughs> exactly the same type of thing here and then you know it literally yeah one week yeah. Or five days, whatever, and it's and gone. Yeah. yeah. And uh yeah, it's fucking out of nowhere. Here's the uh other strangest thing too, is um how like when you can leave the hospital. And I was thinking about this last night. Um because the hospital was at is basically walking distance to my house, you know. And uh Fez and his family have pretty much been in that hospital and they even got like a little place next door to it. And it's just, you know, that constant thing. And it's just, it's an overly dramatic, you know, thing. I mean, it's the end of a life of someone that uh, that you love. And then you walk out of that hospital and you're walking back and just life goes on. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, what is a, a, a kind of a, a extreme tragedy on a personal level? When you look at the rest of the world, life just goes on. You know, it's not like a nine eleven thing where everybody shares into it. You know, your your pain, or even uh, in some uh, cases, um, relief that can finally come from it. It's still so personal, even though we all go through this uh, stuff all the time. Um, and it's such a uh, a strange thing, too, when I was sitting there with his mom last night. His mom and dad have known each other since they were 10 years old. And she's, you know, said to me, she goes, I don't know or remember any life without him. And I'm like, wow, that's the kind of stuff that's never going to happen again, you know? Like, they didn't go out and have a dating life and didn't, you know, you know, they were basically... Uh, there's uh, the the circumstances, you know, that where they were born, and that's the life that they lived. Uh, and we just had that show uh, yesterday when we were telling people, get out there, man, go to as many places, and you know, meet all kinds of people. Change. And um, it is, uh, it's it's just a different way to live. And there's no saying really, which is you know, the best way or. It's just all these personal choices that we have. Uh, Fez's dad absolutely was one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. And not only that, but an incredibly easy laugh. I mean, you could get the guy to, to lose his breath if you just, uh, and you know, once you start to work it a little bit and you're like, okay, he's going, I'm going to stay on him. You could be relentless with him. And it's very rare to run into people that have, uh, uh, like a really good sense of humor where they can be funny and then also give it up and just and and take it in. But the other strange thing too, uh, because we all see Fez as this unique character, you know, and obviously he is. But then there's also so much of his dad in him. It's just so weirdly strange how much 
Fez will remind you of his of his dad. And his dad, uh, you know, uh, like... So, you know, Fez was doing this thing, uh, I think like a lot of Protestants, where they all, like, they kind of don't cry in front of each other, and then they would each go into the other room and kind of fall apart a little bit, you know? But, so I was walking uh, Fez around the, the hospital the other night, and uh, we were just talking about how, you know, kind of lucky uh, you are to have that, you know, relationship to even lose. And Fez says to me, um, and I never have heard of this before, uh, anyone saying this. He goes, uh, you know, I was, you know, I am lucky that I had that last week because we were just having a ball. And he goes, and the fact that we were together for President's Day <laughs> and... uh you know, I don't say anything, but like I'm thinking, and Fez is like, that was always our day together. Uh, we'd get up early in the morning and uh, watch all the stuff on TV about presidential history, and we would just pepper each other with presidential trivia, trying to stump each other, you know, and it was just always the greatest day for us. And I was thinking to myself, I'm going to give you a little gift right now, Fezzy, and not bust your balls about this. <laughs> Who the hell makes a big deal out of President's Day? It's not even Memorial Day or Fourth of July. President's Day. Fez and his dad, it's the weirdest thing. They love presidents and presidential history, and it doesn't matter which party it comes from. <laughs> like, they love Nixon. They love Johnson. They love Carter. They love Reagan. They love Clinton. It doesn't matter to them what side this is, and it's just... Uh, I don't know whether it has to do with like pomp and circumstance, but it uh, it's the funniest thing. And then we were talking about his dad uh, and what a dark, dark sense of humor uh, that he had. And, you know, if a TV would be on and God forbid a Fekro would be in a commercial because he'd be all over it. It reminds you of Fez. Like Fez is always like have that thing of fighting a fat girl and. I don't know whether it's genetic or learned behavior, but that family busts the balls on fat girls on TV. They're just all over them. And uh, so he was, he's talking about his dad, and he goes, and so silly. He goes, his sense of humor was so silly. Um, he loved wearing a dress. And I, I'm literally, I'm standing in the hospital in this cardiac ward, and I think to myself, this is the second present I'm giving you. Don't ask for a third present, dude. I'm going to be on you the next <laughs> crazy thing that you say. He loved wearing a dress. Oh, God, it was so funny. And, uh, you know, Fez's brother is hysterical, too. I, I, I told you he was like the Marilyn. Well, Fez's whole family is funny. Like, they're either funny on purpose or funny and don't know it. You know, yeah. you have like half the family is like really quick witted, ready to bust balls. And the other part of the family, oblivious to it all, but incredibly big characters. That is perfect for somebody who busts balls to uh, to sit next to. And uh, so they're all going to, uh, I guess, uh, get together there in Florida. But, you know, sitting around with them last night. Um, he kind of wait in the waiting room where they, you know, get his dad prepped and all, you know, take, uh, take all the machines off him and stuff so that, uh, his mom could go in and kiss him goodbye. And they just sat around just bringing up every kind of ridiculous, hideous thing. And this is the, uh, this thing that his dad, when he would come to, New York would always go to Dylan's candy shop and buy a pound of whatever kind of candy. And I guess there's some kind of card that you have. <laughs> and uh, he had he had one more pound, and then he gets the free pound of, of chocolate. And I'm going, uh, 10 pounds of chocolate. I don't know whether this plays into this at all. Um, oh, God, they're funny people. It is the strangest thing about life, though. You know, it's the strangest thing about how much you share uh, out there and how much is just like, 
uniquely personal, you know, and you, and and things like this always make you come up with the thing of like, well, what is a good life? How does somebody spend uh, a good life? You know, because I mean, when you really look at it, uh, you're going to pay for it at the end. You know, there's a real check that comes in at the end. So you might as well have enjoyed as much as as you want it because you're paying for it, you know. I mean, you're paying for all the courses, whether you eat them or not. You know, you skip the salad, the bill at the end of this does not come any, you know, cheaper. Um, So really, you might as well have two desserts. You might as well have 10 pounds of chocolate because it ain't easy. And I don't even know how we keep it out of our minds. I mean, it's kind of amazing that we know that we're here for a finite amount of time and that we spend any of that time, you know, watching Jersey Shore or being pissed off at our neighbor or saying I'm not talking to my brother anymore. I mean, you have a short amount of life, even if you have a long life. And the stuff that we get off, you know, doing is kind of amazing, but maybe that's the whole point of it. You know, maybe the most important part of a life at all is just the trivial stuff, you know? And no, I don't mean presidential trivia. Let's face it, that is a wasted life no matter what you look at it. You and your kid are sitting around trying to stump each other in presidential trivia. You might as well be drinking. It doesn't matter what you're doing at that point. Um... But it's sincerely uh, always the fact that we've been on this planet for as long as we uh, have and still haven't really figured out um, what what it's all about. But I guess, you know, there at the end, having people that love you, you know, having people to cry for you having people that are going to keep your stories alive, I think that's important. man. Maybe that's the whole thing. The fact that immediately, after everybody got done crying, they just started busting balls like there was no tomorrow. Everybody was just... Uh, and I, you know, being Irish Catholic, I don't understand it without the liquor, but some people do things in what? different... You know, there's Protestants, I guess. Uh-huh. Um but we'll open up the phones now. 866 Ron Zero Fez. 866 Ron Zero Fez. Um, here's, um, here's Bill. Bill, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, Ron, that was a uh, really nice, uh, really nice thing you just did there for your pal. And I just want to send out my thoughts and prayers to Fez and his family. Um, that's very nice of you. And they are, uh, they're religious people. They are definitely uh, religious people. Um, I don't know what sect of the Lutheran Church they belong to, but his his father and his father and mother are very, very involved in their church. And they, I guess, called up to New York to have uh, the local Lutheran minister stop by, and uh, they brought like a prayer blanket or something. I don't know what all these things mean. You know, it's like a nice thing that they do. And, uh, you know, the guy, I guess, to come in and pray with him while he was in the ICU. And uh, the guy had to come down from Westchester, you know, because whatever this church Fez grew up in does not exist. (laughs) And the most populated uh, city in the United States. Most diverse. Yeah. And, and I go, well, there's Lutheran churches. And his mom said, yeah, but not our kind of Lutheran. Oh, which is really funny that you could be <laughs> whatever religion and still uh, branch off into different things. Um, Sean, Sean, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, boys. Um, hey, uh, I lost my wife in June after a year-long battle with leukemia. And, you know, this isn't about me. I just wanted to preface it. uh you know, listening to you talk about your pal, and it, it's really touching to me. Um, I became a I became a big fan traveling back and forth about an hour and a half between uh, Fayetteville and, and UNC when she was getting chemo and whatnot. Um, she ended up having a, a massive stroke um, about a month into her chemo because uh, 
when she was diagnosed. She was about three weeks postpartum with our second boy. Um, so it was just an ugly, ugly year. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it really made us very close. And shit, I, I got to pull over, brother. I know. <laughs> um, but the things that that you was said about about your friend and and uh, the way that you talked about his dad uh, really obviously touched me a lot. And I, I listen to the show because you do you bust balls all the time, and it's it's funny. And it's not always a funny show, but man, really? it, it's uh, you <laughs> you you really. I don't know, even know what else to say, Ronnie. You. No. Uh, no, I understand how, like, when stuff like this comes up, it brings up, like, your own stuff, you know? And it's very, very weird that whenever you hear things like this, you kind of go back into your own people that you lost. Yeah. You know, when something like this comes up, it it it's definitely going to affect Pepper in the fact that he's kind of, in his mind, re-saying goodbye to his mom. You just can't get out of that. No, it's that's... almost automatic. It's that's... almost like an automatic thing. It, it's it It hurts. But but it's a it's a neat feeling to experience, and also it, it's it's really moving to uh, to have the privilege. And I'm not trying to be corny, but have the privilege of of listening to you talk about your buddy and his family the way that you did. So thanks well, thanks for bringing that into us. The you know what I mean? the important part of the story is now with me and Pepper and Hicks. The score is two to one to zero. Ronnie B still leading the pack in parents. Well, third. You're you're in third place. Getting dominated on actually. Yeah, you are, but not as bad as you were um, two days ago. There's, so yeah, there's hope. There is hope, but no hope that you could ever catch up. <laughs> just that the everybody will fall to your bottom. Look at this draw. Um. Eight six six Ron zero Fez eight six six Ron zero Fez. Uh, here's Kevin. Kevin, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Ron. It's Kevin yeah. in Missouri. Yeah. Hey, um, I just hope this is a good, positive thing for Fez in the long run. You know, sometimes something like this will turn things around for somebody, put life in perspective, and nothing but good thoughts for Fez. Yeah, uh, Fezzy did, um, Fezzy held up. He definitely, uh, manned up. Uh, for his family in kind of the strangest way. It's why you could never really gamble and bet on the way people are going to react to things, you oh, know. No. Because like this was, of course, his biggest fear. You know what I mean? I mean, he's had a fear about his dad for a long time. And his dad, you know, had a first massive heart attack a long time ago. Um, probably before I even met Fez. And has never... Uh, you know, ha has always kind of dealt with his dad. Uh, has you know, was actually still working into his seventies. Was you know, managing banks and stuff. And um, Fez had always thought this is the kind of thing that I can't handle. I cannot handle this. And Fez handled it much better than he does getting on the uh, elevator here. Or, you know, making sure that he uh, brings some notebooks in. I mean, he sincerely, sincerely did everything that you were supposed to do uh, as a son, uh, as a brother. You know, he's working the phones with his people around the country. And uh, he did great. He absolutely did fantastic. And, uh, and I told him that. Uh, I'm like, you know, anything that needs to be done, dude, you're already doing um, and I don't think, uh, I don't think he would have ever seen that coming, you know, but this is what we do as human beings. You know, you're able to say, um, it's time for me to be the guy, you know, life is funny. It's absolutely funny. Um, Mike, you're on the run of Fest show. Hey there, Ryan B. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can put up on YouTube some flowers, <laughs> And, uh, uh, you know, first of all, let me just say, I'm, I, I know, I didn't talk to Fez about this, but I know that he always likes to keep his, um, family life kind of separate. So maybe just drop him an email at two, uh, Fez2000 at AOL. 
uh, I think that he would like that a lot more than, you know, what he would think of as people, um, you know, kind of getting involved in, in the non-Fez Watley part of his life. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Graham, you're on the Run and Fez show. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Um, I was just calling, did, did Fez ever get a chance to tell his dad his secret or no? Um, that would be Fez's story to tell. Uh, but I, I'll tell you this about his old man. He absolutely, 100% accepted Fez. And there was never uh, a wobble in that, you know, and uh, never a wobble. Um, and that's a true story. Uh, but again, any of those other stories, that would be up to Fez for if he ever decides to uh, share that. Uh, and even though, you know, it's the other funny thing that, whatever that part of uh, religion plays for people and the whatever those rules are, I still think uh, people end up putting family first. <laughs> you know, you, you'll you kind of adjust a little bit. Uh, Lou, you're on the Run and Fest show. Hey, Ronnie. I just, uh, man, um, I started listening to you guys when I was 17, I guess. I'm 37 now on 95 YNF. Mm. And, uh, you guys have always, like, uh, good, you know, I know we haven't lost either of you. It's just, you've always been there through the, you know, lonely times and through my addiction. And I could relate to you. And, uh, you know, sometimes we would lose you, you know, on certain radio Oh, yeah, stations. we'd get in, in trouble from here and there. But, um, yeah, it is, it is a strange uh, constant. And that's the exact time uh, when... Uh, I started radio and we and we brought Fez in. That's when I uh, met his dad, and like I said about his dad, he was this incredibly funny guy, but would only you know had never gotten into the business or anything, but would be the guy that would be the after dinner speaker, and uh, Fez would write gags for him and stuff. And if there was any church stuff, he'd be the guy who went up and did stuff. And he was flat out funny, and thought that the Fez Watley thing was hysterical. I mean, he got the biggest kick out of Fez uh, becoming Fez. He always thought it was just flat out funniest stuff in the world. Um, here's uh, Joe. Joe, you're on Fez. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Uh, you know, I'm saying it, of course, because of Fez's father. But I think it's also a happy, not happy, wonderful thing that, you know, and I don't think it was a coincidence. You know, we all have religious beliefs and faith. I don't think it was by accident that uh, that he was in New York at the time of his death, together with Fez. Mm. I think there's something, you know, a lot, a, a lot to that. I mean, when my father passed, I didn't have that opportunity. You know, he died in the hospital. I wasn't yeah. around it. And, you know, for him to be there with him, I think, is just... You know, a great thing. You know, what are the chances of that? You know, what are the chances of that? Nah, I don't know. You don't know what else to say, but, uh, you know, maybe because I didn't have that opportunity. And, you know, he's had that opportunity. He had that opportunity. had that opportunity with the parent that didn't even live in, 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 in the same state. So, you know, I, if you, grow, you try to grab onto anything when these things happen. Well, I lost both of my parents and tried to grab onto anything. And I think, you know, he needs just to grab onto that. And, to, you know, it's, that's it. It is really, really strange. And that that exactly what you're saying is true, that, you know, um, the odds against that happening, particularly when he was, you know, as healthy as he's been, Obviously healthy enough to travel. Uh, Fez's mom was telling me last night how much his dad was looking forward to coming up. He loved coming to New York. They would keep, they literally it seemed to me like they did the same vacation every single time. They went to the same exact places and, um, got a huge kick out of Fez living in the city. Got a huge kick of Fez being on, uh, serious, uh, so everything about this trip was like 
really fantastic up until the point that he got sick. I mean, even Fez, who, as we know, can find the worst of things, said, man, this was unbelievable uh, right up until the time that he got sick. Um, it is... Um, it is a strange thing, and I don't know, you know, even if you are the most scientific thinking person in the world, you do start to get a little mystical when things like that start to happen, where you're going, man, that's odd, you know? Why would it happen like that, and why would this seemingly give Fez uh, more strength than I've seen him have in quite some time? I mean, if I'm being totally honest here, I was going to say he reminded me of the old Fez, but that's not even true. He was definitely, the way he handled this was definitely more mature um, and together um, than I've ever seen Fez, you know? Definitely with, uh, was being strong. Uh, and I and not just I don't think putting up a strong front, yeah. but being strong, Be just guy. being that guy and saying this is you know my time to to carry the ball for this guy. Um, it's interesting, Vicky. You're on the Run of Fest show. Vicky, do we got you, darling? Yeah. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm driving to work. I'm listening to you, and it's making me well up, and I'm. Dabbing my eyes, and I'm looking in my rearview mirror, and I see, okay, I have mascara on my eyes now. And then I start laughing because I'm thinking if this all took place just a week later, Fez would be dealing with all of this phantom funeral, possibly with Uncle e Leo eyebrows, which then is such a fezzy thing, and that just struck me as so funny. But here's the funniest thing. His dad would have thought that was hysterical. <laughs> I mean, seriously, there is nothing that his dad found funnier than that kind of humor. I would never go around and tell you that I thought his dad's humor, what I said, one of the funniest guys I ever met, uh, I would never have called it highbrow. <laughs> I mean, this was really old school humor. Um, Patty, Patty, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, um, I was just calling because my... Uh... You know, when we we drove up to New York the day after Christmas uh, to visit my parents for, for the rest of the holiday from Tennessee, and um, while we were on our way, my dad suddenly passed away, and it just you know that just brought it all back because I was thinking how weird that we were on our way there. I mean, I was sad that I didn't make it there before he passed away, mm -hmm. but um, but I was there for my mom, you know, and it was just like a weird. It was just a weird kind of coincidence that we were on our way there when it happened. I mean, he wasn't sick or anything, but it was, I mean, it was devastating, but, but I was there for my mom and it was, you know, it's kind of the same thing, you know, and I just feel terrible about Fez. I really do. And I'm, um, you know, I just want to send my condolences. Well, I mean, we, all, we all take, uh, this pain when something like this comes up, but we all know that it's also part of the whole trip, uh, the worst part of the trip, but we all know that like this is this is it too, you know. And now, uh, Fez's people will spend all their time, you know, thinking and talking about him and laughing about him. You know, what I mean, it's not like this guy. It's not like any any of the people that ever knew uh, Fez's dad thought. Hey, I wish I would have done this or that. Everybody had that relationship with him. You got to meet him, Pep, when he came up that time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, a really, really uh, fun guy. Um, Tony, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. This is a sad day for the Ron and Fez show. Uh, you're truly a rock. And I'm wondering, did uh, any of Fez's siblings make it up to New York to say goodbye to the dad? Uh, yeah, his, uh, brother was, uh, with him, and, uh, Fez's younger brother, who is, I, I told you, he's like the Marilyn Munster of the family, where he just, <laughs> like, he doesn't give in to all the strangeness. I mean, he's, he, he came in the youngest, 
and any of the stuff that bothers Fez about I never got to and no, he just doesn't give a shit. Uh, 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 you know, you don't improve, you don't approve of this decision I'm making. So what? Uh, I'll catch you. Oh, you're into this weird thing. Uh, that's yours. Has nothing to do with me. And it just goes to show you that there, that whatever anyone says about this happened or these are the circumstances and that's the way that, uh, I am. No, it really, it, it can't be true or else he wouldn't be happily married with three kids <laughs> and, you know, um, so yeah, not, I'll tell you, I think Fez calls him Travis on the air because I want to make sure I stay with the gimmick, but, uh, he, f- Gets this call, you know, uh, our dad's sick, he's in the hospital, jumps on a plane, you know, grabs whatever he has close, f- flies up, gets off the plane, comes in, uh, worked out, you know, hey, Fez's apartment, I'm not taking my mom back and forth to Roosevelt <laughs> Island like a nut, uh, I'm going to, uh, and I'll save some of these stories, because there's some real funny stories, but I'll save, I'll, I'll let Fez tell them later. Uh, but I'll just say this about him. 39 hours before he shut his eyes the first time once he got here. I mean, he looked like a wreck. I mean, he looked like a guy had been up for 39 hours. But no complaining, all matter of fact about it. Um, he also had this great relationship with his dad. They were all, uh, baseball buddies, uh, caught a lot of the Rays uh, games was uh, teasing his dad that his dad was in the official hospital of the New York Yankees, who I guess they decide, you know, that's who they hate. And this is why his dad was on the tube and on. His dad was balling up his fist, all pissed off about it. Um, great, great, great kid. Just terrific, terrific uh, guys. Um, Pirate, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, Ronnie, that's... Um, that's- pretty much a similar story to what happened with my dad. Me and my sister came back from Mexico, and, you know, a week later he was he was done for and just found out that my mom has breast cancer. Um, I mean, real strange things happen with the way we live nowadays, and can you really even be surprised about it when, when you find out about some terrible illness or, you know, some catastrophe happens? It's really not that surprising, is it? No, it definitely isn't surprising. Uh, surprising on one level, but I think the way that we all exist and the way that we all can get up and go to work in the morning or, and go shopping and cook our food is to push all that stuff back a little bit. You know what I mean? Right. Just to right. push back uh, mortality. And let's face it, I think for most of us, um, it's not our mortality that scares us. It's the mortality of the people that we love, you know, um, obviously for a man, you get it in the back of your mind. Someday I'm going to have to, you know, bury my parents and you push that back. But when it comes, then you're thinking, well, this woman that I love, no, she has to bury me. These kids, they got to bury me. And there is nothing that you can do to assure any of those things. There's nothing. There's no amount of money. There's no amount of insurance. Um, you see, people deal with the toughest things in the world all the time. And most of the time you're like, oh, his, you know, kid's sick. I'm going to push that far, you know. Oh, I feel bad for him. But and there's part of you that think, that's the kind of stuff that happens to the other people. Not going to happen to me, you know, because you just don't want to believe that we are completely vulnerable. You know, and you try to have some laughs. You try to, you know, bet on football or whatever you can do to, in your spare time to push some of that stuff back. Um, but it's always there, you know. It's always uh, completely uh, there. Uh, Jim, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, hey, Ron. I grew up in a funeral home, and I've literally been to a thousand funerals, and uh, everyone mourns different. Uh, some people laugh, but some people cry. Some people can't say a word. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people don't want to see the body. Some people will kiss them. And I just want the listeners to know that when, Ron, when Fezzi comes back, not to say, did you do this or didn't you do that, because there's no 
good way or bad way to mourn. It's completely individual and just leave the guy alone. Everyone does the best they can in these times. Um, I think I was probably, God, I had to be almost 20 when I found out that the uh, after a funeral and then after the wake that in everyone's family, the uncles didn't start punching each other. I always thought, good, let's everybody punch each other and get it out of our systems. And then that, you know, is a place to put the aggravation. Um, it's just, yeah, you do whatever you have to do. Um, everybody deals with it with the way they have to deal with it. And the fact that, you know, I'm bragging up about Fez now for how he's handling this time. Doesn't mean that he's not going to feel it really hard in, you know, a month, a week, a year. Who knows? Yeah. Particularly with Fez, who knows? But the point is, uh, the real truth of it is, um, when, when the, when it was time for Fez to be that son, he was. And, uh, I'd have been up his ass if he wasn't, but, I didn't even have to at all. I mean, when I went over to the hospital, uh, I didn't, you know, go around and talk to the doctors for him and start looking at charts and finding out if, you know, going down a list, did you call your uncle? Everything was taken care of. Uh, Fez and his brother took care of everything. And they've got a, a brother and a sister in Florida. And, and Fez, uh, Fez's dad has grandchildren. And they would hold up the uh, the phone, like the speaker phone, so everybody could talk to him. Um, they were terrific. They were absolutely terrific. Um, uh, here's our buddy Arch. Arch, how are you? Hey, I uh, just want to take a second and um, the way you're uh, dropping in these little, almost celebrating his life already. I really uh, appreciate that. A lot of that doesn't go on. A lot of people hang on to uh, bad feelings and express them. But this way you're um, speaking about your buddy and his uh, his family is uh, it, it's uh, it's just not done. And uh, it's it's touching. Well, you know, uh, like I told you before, I mean, Fez's dad it was literally a terrific guy. He lived into his seventies, which nowadays is, is still too young, you know. Um, but not everybody gets that. Uh, and the fact that you know he was with the the same girl as he was when he was ten years old. They knew each other since they were children. It's bizarre, really. When you come to think about it, it's bizarre. And the fact that he had, uh, you know, was one of those guys that everybody at work thought was the great guy. Everybody at his church thought he was the great guy. Uh, his grandchildren were crazy about uh, part of the candy store stuff. Because he was making sure he was bringing gifts back to all of his uh, grandchildren. Um, and they were all crazy about him. You know, they all wanted to spend time with him. And he had tickets to the Bucks game, a uh, season ticket holder for a long time, and would everybody got to go to the Bucks games with him. Now, they all drove him crazy because they were running around doing other stuff and this and that, and they weren't really focusing on the game. But they all have those memories now. I mean, even the littlest ones are going to have memories of him. And that's all you really get out of any part of life. You get these little moments that you remember. I mean, when you think about your family, you can't remember every single day. When you think about your grandparents, um, and you had to start recalling, you know, things, you're only going to remember some real high points and some real low points. Um, and it seems like those little bubbles that these memories float in is all we ever really keep of each other. And all we ever really keep of our own life, you know, you look back over things and you go, I was like this as a, as a kid. But if you asked how many memories could you put together, it's probably not that many, you know, and you just take those and you go, well, that's what my relationship with that person was like. Uh, and you definitely want to have more good ones uh, than bad ones. And I don't know, for me, when something like this uh, comes up, um, you, you got to say to yourself, you know, did he leave anything on the table? I don't say it. I, th I think that he enjoyed himself. And uh, I think that he enjoyed the people in his life. It seems to be the important thing to me. Uh, it's our friend Queen Elizabeth. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, yeah. Pep. 
Um, I lost my dad about a year and a half ago. I was uh, five months pregnant with my first baby, and it was kind of the same thing. Uh, he was a, a week in the hospital. He died on a Thursday, and me and my brothers just sat around with him until, you know, he was beyond speech, and uh, we just shared different memories of him, and uh, it, it kind of made us feel better to celebrate his life because four children are going to have four different childhoods, even with the same parents. Isn't that funny? Yeah, and, um, you know, it, it was tremendous to hear, like, funny stories when he was with my brothers, and, um, and then they would hear stuff that happened with me, and, and just to kind of celebrate his life despite losing him. And he was young. He was 57. And, um, you know, I think Fezzi's a lot stronger than he gives himself credit for because, you know, that strength doesn't just pop out of nowhere. I agree 100%. That's deep inside of you. And it's still, you know, and I was pregnant at the time, so I had to focus on my child, you know, being born. And and then you kind of go into autopilot, and Mm -hmm. it doesn't hit you sometimes for, for a long time. But then, you know, you draw on that strength that... That's in there, and I know Fezzi, it's in there with him, and it was good to know that, um, you know, he made a noble end and, you know, was with his family, and they all kind of got, you know, no regrets, like, oh, I forgot to say this, or I forgot to tell him this, and it just, it really brought it back to me, because you can feel that pain if you ever lost a parent, you can feel that pain so acute, even here in somebody else's. Yeah, I mean, and it it is a universal thing. You know, I remember when I was a kid, my uh, my family always had us go to uh, whatever you know funerals were going on. And I I know in some families that's like kept, but I remember being like a real little kid uh, at funerals and kind of getting you know because of what the older people would say is uh that this is you know part of life i remember even older people would say to me and i would be little well it looks like i'm next and i'm like jesus christ can i have a moment here can i have a moment um yeah this is this is as much life as anything else it really is it is as much life as any of the other parts of it um Let's go over to Bill. Bill, you're on my Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, uh, Fez, great guy, obviously, and uh, I just wanted to point out that, uh, you know, he took a lot of ribbing and a lot of harassing over all the years about always taking all his vacations back down to Florida, and everyone who listened thought he should be out doing things on his own and going here and going cruises and going on that. And I think he's going to look back at all that time that he went down there and, and he maybe not had great holidays and dealt with the anxieties, and I think he's really going to look back at that and appreciate that he was... Well, I will only tell you this. None of that ever had to do with his dad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> leave it at that, yeah. None of that ever had to do with his dad. <laughs> uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, Jim in Boston, you're on the Ron Fez Show. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, I just relate to uh, all this to to the big cat and the fact that um, for some reason I remember you, I relate this to you talking to your dad about when the Phillies won the World Series. Mm-hmm. And I lost my dad to Lou Gehrig and never got to see the Red Sox win the World Series. Yeah. And for some reason, you know, there's something to be when the Sox won the series, just like you, I, I really wanted to talk to my dad. Didn't have a chance. Yeah. But I, I really wanted to call and just say that you don't call him the big cat for no reason. Yeah. You know? And uh, I love Fez, and a lot of people up in Boston love him. You know? He really is a strong person, and I just wanted to send some love up from here. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, let's go over to Troy. Troy, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, I lost my mom about a month ago to cancer, and I know exactly what he's going through. I mean, he's going to have some good days and some bad days. He's a good he's a good man and you guys know that. He's got a good a lot good people around him with you in the show there. So I just wanted to give my condolences and tell him to keep his head up. It'll get better. Yeah. 
I do have some people writing about wanting to send flowers, and I think that probably Fez would like to keep this as a, um, you know, a family sh- uh, experience for himself. But if you would like to write to Fez at um, Fez2000 at AOL, um, I'm sure he'd like to get those. Well, let's face it, I know he'd love to get some good emails. <laughs> I know he would. Um, let's go over to Lucas in Austin. You're my Fez. Hey, uh, Ronnie and Pepper. Uh, I'm, uh, it's Lucas, the intern uh, from 2008. And uh, I just wanted to tell you guys um, and certainly uh, somehow pass along to Fez and in some way that uh my time in new york it was because of you and it couldn't have been any more incredible and you guys were just absolutely the best and uh and fez was amazing he he really uh did his best to take care of me and make my time there uh special and, and uh, helpful and and you guys are just the best and i just want to pass along my condolences because uh, it's a rough time obviously and uh you guys are just the best and i just wanted that to I just wanted to say that. That's uh, all I got for you, really. I appreciate it, my friend. Take care of yourself. Uh, William in Dallas, you're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie, how you doing? Yeah. Let me ask you this question. I've never really lost anyone uh, super close to me, and, and I kind of walk around with this fear of how am I going to handle it, you know? Like, how do I know I'm going to be able to, to get through this? And I don't know if it's something that you've been – obviously, it is something you've been through. When it hits, if you haven't really been thinking about that, how, how difficult is it for you to get through something like that? Um, it's not, it's one of those things is like, it literally is not a choice. It's not a choice at all. Uh, Jarrett, you're on the run of Fez show. Yeah, Ronnie B. Uh, I just want to thank you for building up this big, big ass family that we've got here. Uh, I think it's a testament to the way that you and Fezzy are able to connect with the listeners and allow the, the two way back and forth for four hours every day that, you know, we as listeners really do feel Fezzy's pain and can feel, uh, by listening to you and talking about Fezzy's dad, just how, how much Fez seemed to love him and the father seemed to love him. And it, it, it's just a really great thing to be able to connect with you guys for four hours every day. And I don't know if, you know, you get thanked enough for it, but, you know, on behalf of the listeners, I really want to thank you and him and, and Hicks and everybody involved with the show for bringing this to us every day. Yeah, we definitely made a mistake on uh, on that part of it. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, here's uh, Richard in Tampa. You're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie B. Um, I go way back. I, I call in every once in a while and talk to you about the old Ron and Ron days, but I actually met Fez's dad at a live gig. It was in St. Pete. I can't think of the place that it was at. It was right off 275 and Eisenhower. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-mm. It was just a really nice guy. It was just happy Fez, you know, was doing his thing, and it was just a great old days, man. Um, i miss him. Fez's dad, absolutely. Got the biggest kick out of uh, Fez uh, being Fez Watley. I mean, he really, really did. Well, uh, I am, uh, like I said, incredibly, incredibly uh, proud of Fez today. And I will also say this. I know it's strange to say at a time of mourning, but I'm happy for Fez uh, that he had that experience of being the guy, you know, being the guy. And um, you do those things. And like my mom says, can't walk. You got to be the guy. Uh, And though I'll I'll leave it up to to Fez when he gets back here to... um, to, to share anything that he wants to share or keep anything that uh, he wants to keep to himself. But in, in overlooking now, you know, Fez's dad's life, having four kids um, and grandchildren and being part of a community and being known as that guy, the fun guy, uh, the silly guy, the guy that could make people laugh and and more importantly than that, the guy that could laugh. Uh, and you need guys uh, that can make you laugh. But I think even I think it's even a bigger thing to be the guy who can laugh, to be the guy who can find lightness uh, in the world. And uh, sitting there with uh, uh, Fez's mom last night and hearing uh, 
Carol say, I've known him since I was 10 years old. I don't remember life before him. That kind of stuff is just doesn't happen. It's not something that does happen. Uh, one of my favorite memories, and I, and I got a lot of Fez's dad, but when we were doing Unmasked, uh, we just first started to get it done, and um, we got Bob Newhart uh, on the show, and Fez's parents decided to come up to yeah. see the Unmasked <laughs> Um, just to be there because his dad was such a, a big fan of Bob Newhart. And, uh, we did it at, at this club, uh, downtown and, uh, brought Fez's dad, uh, back to meet him. And they were shaking hands and it was, uh, it was a great moment for me because I'm like, well, there are, uh, two of the funniest people in the world meeting. To me, it was two comedy giants finally getting a chance to meet. It really was because he was that funny. Um, Fez's dad always had a song that he shared uh, with his mom since he was uh, a little kid. And uh, it was his uh, favorite song. And even though he's a Scotsman and he had no right to this song, I'm going to give it to him anyway. Uh, and I just want to say absolutely, um, on a personal note, um, to Dick Hillier, thank you so much for giving us off Fez Watley. That's been another life that you changed. You helped change my life. Stanny boy. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes. The pipes are calling from Glen 